Hi, this is Tommy's Piano Corner and I'm Tommy. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves the piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the most from this great hobby. In the last couple of videos, we've talked a lot about how to improve the audio quality that we're able to get when just using our smartphone to record ourselves playing. What I'd like to touch on in today's video is how you can actually start to make great improvements to the quality of the video that you get and make it much more interesting for people to watch. If you're sitting comfortably, then let's begin. When I first started to create videos and load them onto my Facebook page, one of the things that became very obvious quite quickly is that watching somebody play the piano isn't exactly the most interesting of things visually for your eyes. It's not like most music videos where singers are able to move around the stage and the guitarists equally are able to move around. With a pianist, you're sitting there and mainly it's your hands that do the moving, your body moves very little. Equally with pop music videos, they can film in great locations, on beaches, on rooftops, in all sorts of places. Let's face it, a piano isn't the most portable of instruments, so you're more limited as to where you can film. Though admittedly, that never really stopped the piano guys, did it? Therefore, if we want to make our videos that little bit more interesting to watch, then we need to think of other ways that we can add interest to the video any TV program or film carefully, you'll see that in fact the camera never ever stays on anything for more than a few seconds. You'll see lots of little tricks like they'll move from person to person as people are speaking. You'll see things such as changing the focal point so that the focus moves from something in the background to something in the foreground. Pay attention next time you're watching the TV and you'll see exactly what I mean. This is what's known as B-roll. B-roll in fact comes in very handy for being able to change the visuals and make things a little more interesting. In the previous videos we really just talked about having a fixed camera angle, so putting our phone on a tripod or propping it up somewhere and taking one film of us playing. What we can now do to make it more interesting is we can film maybe from a few different angles that we can use we can also include photographs perhaps, or even images from the score, just so that we can make it visually more appealing. What I would generally do when I'm recording is I'll film once where I'm recording the audio and the video at the same time. Normally let's call that my A-roll, and that will be the one where you see my hands the most. There it's the most important that you're actually able to keep the synchronization of the video on the audio absolutely perfect, otherwise it would look quite odd. At its very simplest, B-roll can just be filming yourself from different angles with your phone. Of course, when we're doing these other takes, we're not really interested in the audio anymore, we just really need to capture the video. What I generally do is I film one fixed main view, which is more focused on my hands, and that's the one where I also record the audio at the same time. I do this because this is where it's more important that the audio and the video are synchronized perfectly. Otherwise, if your fingers don't move in time to the music, it would look rather odd. For the other views, even if your hands are visible, if they're slightly out of sync with the music, it's not really that important as it's much less noticeable. And of course you can film from angles where your hands aren't even visible. All we then need to do is combine all of this footage in iMovie and as I'm going to show you, this is remarkably easy to do. There are lots and lots of tutorials on YouTube about how to use iMovie. And these will help you get very clever about editing your video if you want to do this. What I'm going to show you here really is just a few starter ideas to get you going. You'll remember in last week's video we looked at how we import the video and the audio and how we synchronize these two together. So now let's start from that point 
and go into iMovie and see what else we can do. Let's say you want to cut away from the main image to a different camera angle, such as through the piano. This couldn't be simpler. First, let's find part of another clip that we'd like to use. Simply click on one of your other clips and you can browse through it to find the part that you want. In the trade, they call this scrubbing. Once you've found the part you like, if you type I on your keyboard where you want to start from, and then O on your keyboard where you want to end from, then you'll see iMovies identify that part of the clip you want to use. All we need to do is drag this selection and place it above the main clip, just like this. Don't worry if your in and out was slightly wrong, you can easily change the selection further here. Now, when we play it, the image will automatically move from the main view to the B-roll, which is above, and then back again. You can control the abruptness of this transition by adjusting it just here. You can do exactly the same with the photograph or another image. Again, we simply drag the photo onto the B-roll track of iMovie. We position it where we want the cutover to happen and then adjust the size of the photograph so that it remains in view for the desired duration. However, without spending very much more time or effort, we can take this even further. For example, there's a great technique called the Ken Burns effect, which is available in iMovie, and this works great on either A or B roll. You'll find it here, under the crop sign. You'll likely be familiar with this crop symbol from pretty much any photo editing app, even from Facebook. In the drop-down menu, we have the choice of Fit, Crop to Fill, and Ken Burns. The Ken Burns effect is a sort of panning effect which allows you to choose the starting framing of your video or photograph, and then the ending framing, such that you get an interesting pan effect when it plays. So let's apply that here. We can adjust the start part quite simply and we can also adjust the end in the same way. Now, when we let it play, we get this effect. You can also use picture-in-picture picture if you want to show additional things whilst leaving the main view still in place. Let's say we want to include part of the score. Again, we simply drag the image onto the B-roll track, adjust it for the duration, and then click on this little type icon here. By default, it says cutaway. However, we have the option to select picture in picture or split screen. We'll come back to blue green screen another time. Finally, don't forget, you can add titles absolutely anywhere using standard iMovie titles. Again, these add some visual interest to keep your viewers engaged. Here then is an example where I did just that. I filmed a main camera angle first. I filmed some alternative angles. I got a photograph of the moon from a photographer friend. And then I put all of these into iMovie and combine them together to produce this video.
I hope you found this video interesting and that it's given you yet more ideas of how to share your love of piano with your friends and family. If you're not already subscribed, please do remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner and make sure you click the little notification bell so that you're notified of new videos as they're released. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.